now that you're a guy that you know is like a mainstay in the lineup, just how hard is that like when you first get the injury and realize like okay I'm gonna have to miss some time. It's tough. It's tough mentally, right? First, first of all, you're you're sad because you want to be a part of the team and you want to you want to contribute and you want to be a part of things. We got a good thing going here, and I want to be a part of it again. I want to be a part of it the whole way through. Last year, I was only here for uh, March on, and you know, to to be able to do it, I think f for the full year would have been great. That's the biggest bummer is you're just mentally you're sad because you just you're gonna miss a lot of time with the guys and you're gonna miss being out on the ice. It's tough not being on the same schedule as the guys, right? Like you come in early, you're done earlier than them usually, your your time is kinda like away from the guys, right? That's because what they need comes first and then they look after me kind of in the times in between and then the trainers do a great job of that uh, making sure I'm getting what I need but being solo through a lot of it is a tough mental part as well I don't want to say you get lonely but you know you're used to being around all the guys and then you have this injury and now you're kind of like isolated a little bit more and you're coming when they're on the road you're not going on the road and so you're coming to the rink by yourself you have to find that drive every day i think when you're when you're injured to to make sure you're still pushing yourself because you don't have the other 22 guys pushing you it's it's kind of only you and the trainer everybody needs a, a support cast around them you know and these guys have their families and you know their wives and kids and stuff and so when they get to the rink you know i'm kind of that bridge between you know, a coach that's on the bench versus a coach that's not. And so, it, you know, it gives you a chance to have intimate conversations. You kind of get to know their families, you get to know their kids. I mean, it's, it's it's just really great to have that. And so, and when you build that relationship, you know, the guys trust you. And when you, you build that that trust, you know, uh, they believe that, you know, you can help them get ready. And at the end of the day, the job is to try to help them just basically come right into an NHL game and, and be seamless and feel great and feel like they're prepared. And, um, and the guys, you know, obviously working with Casey and John upstairs too, really help with that and so it's a real team approach and uh, everybody has their own little niche that they've got to kind of execute on and so it's great working with them one-on-one -on -one. I love it. He's great he's a huge asset I think for this team you know you can talk to him and open up and he can give you perspective he, he knows so much scientifically as well you'd be surprised of, of how much he knows about the body and and how to get yourself right skating wise health wise things like that. Well, the first part on the rehab side is really making sure that you're just, you're moving them through a, a series of progressionary movements, you know, that really can kind of make them feel good. And, and, you know, obviously not, you know, recreate or create another asymmetry or recreate the injury. What I try to do is I try to work on movement patterns and skills that translate to those patterns. And so, if you, you know, if you watch the game, you know, there's specific movements that happen out on the ice and those movements are associated with specific skills. And then, you know, you bridge them into the concepts that Jared and, and Ray and, and Nolan want to, to, to see out in the ice, you know, whether it's a delay or if it's a cutback or if it's a counterflow, some of the offensive terms we might use or a track or how, to, how are some of those patterns, you know, uh, how do they mesh in with the structure that we want to play with. Going through drills, he's doing it with you and you're like, man, if he's pushing himself like this, why can't I push myself like that? So yeah, he's, he's great. I'm giving it to you. Lap of hip flexion, no Dorsey. Doing it with the guys is always just something that I've always prided myself on. You know, I feel like I enjoy being out there. I, I think energy is really important. It's contagious. And, uh, you know, I try to do it with them so that they can, you know, they can, they can be excited about it. If you can actually produce a little bit of a picture for them, you know, it gives them a little bit of a chance to kind of copycat and, and away you go. It was kind of a situation where when you become a coach, you actually are looking at players and trying to understand the way they move. And it was just something I was um, always kind of fortunate to be able to have is to be able to move out in the ice. And, um, and so we try to take a developmental approach to the players and, and really just try to kind of start to understand exactly what was going on. And so from there, we, you know, we, we bought some cameras, uh, three motion capture cameras, and we started to study movements of players and their skills and how they express themselves and what created power and what created speed and velocity. And you come up with a bunch of you know, KPIs, key performance indicators that really kind of make it. And then you build a method through it. And, um, and then, you know, and then that's kind of how I started. I started out in the NHL as a skating coach uh, with Nashville and that was a great opportunity there. 
and then obviously, you know, uh, guys wanted to kind of expand on, you know, working with skills and trying to transfer performance to games and uh, how do you do that? And so that's kind of, you know, basically brought full circle. Coming here with the Avs has been a lot of um, that, but also the rehab work. And the rehab work is great because, you know, you're, you're working with Scott Woodward and Matt Sokolowski and, and Donovan, um, you know, just to make sure that the guys have to take steps in the way that they have to move. And you can't move them, you know, too quickly, but you've got to understand exactly what the injury is and what are some of the limitations. and. There's a lot of phases, I think, to it, right? So first of all, you're healthy and you're playing in the NHL and you're going through the every day and you're trying to stay healthy. That, you know, that's I think that's like phase zero, maybe you could call it, like where you're just like, you're trying to stay healthy, which is not easy to do in this league. I mean, there's it's a fast paced game and you're playing games all the time. You're skating almost every day. Uh, it can take a toll on you. So injuries are, are going to happen, right? Like it's a part of the game. And then you look into like phase one where you're, it's that mental battle of, okay, I'm hurt. What's the, what's the diagnosis here? Like how long am I going to be out for what's what am I looking at four to six two weeks is it three months am I surgery not surgery kind of making like your plan and then it's getting back to like that mobility working through things and and you know starting to get the injury to feel better and then it's working back to skating and getting in shape right because nothing you can like train off ice do all the cardio you want but skating shape is just a little bit different so then you work into the skating phase of things and how long that takes to get your body right and so then it's like skating with the guys to make sure your timing is right because you can skate by yourself all you want but you know until you're making passes to guys in full speed and practice and and trying to keep up with the d zone and moving your feet and reading plays that's a whole other element of the game to make sure that you're prepared right and you got to be mentally prepared physically prepared and then you got to be kind of i guess emotionally prepared where like you trust everything that's going on uh, with your body you feel healthy you feel ready to go you're in a good place you're kind of just breaking up the injury to like, okay, I'm, I'm into this phase now. Like, okay, I'm getting closer, I'm into this phase. And, and that helps you, I think, uh, I think for me at least, it's helped me break down injuries and prepare for getting back. When they're working with somebody one-on-one -on -one like me, they're getting like thousands of touches within, you know, a few sessions, you know, it's like way more touches than they'll ever get in practice or way more movement patterns. And so, you know, what really happens is that they're just honing in on their skills, right? And it gives them a chance to kind of reset a little bit, work on some things that they don't get a chance to work on um, because the, the season's grueling and, you know, you're practicing almost every day and playing every other day. So you don't get a chance to get those, the, the amount of reps, you know? And so really, you know, we've had, we've had a lot of success uh, really repping them through a lot of the these touches and these movement patterns which allows them to kind of come back and, and feel good about their game. You work so hard for so long, you know, by yourself, and then when you finally get to go and put that into action with the team, but even though it may be just a non-contact jersey or whatever it is, at least you're out there with the guys. You can joke around, you know, you're, you're keeping up to the play, and it's just a totally different feel. Um, being out there so that and that's like you know one of the last steps you take so you know you're getting closer you can start to see the the light at the end of the tunnel of okay I'm, I'm gonna play here soon you know things are going well I just got to keep on this it's really exciting for me obviously it's uh, you know it gives you a little bit of um, you know I guess probably closure to that you did a really good job and and that's really good and you know we've been lucky you know we've had uh, a lot of players come back and feel really good I'm fortunate that I didn't go through it when I was younger, because I was in a more mature place, you know, I was more settled with my life, more mature in my recovery and understanding of the league and what it takes and the hard work that it takes and how you really need to look after yourself. So I think I, I was fortunate to have to sustain the injuries later. No, you don't want injuries, but to sustain them later, where where you have resources um, like I do as well. You know, you meet more people in the league, you have treatment people that you rely on as well, and you can just kind of like talk to people. You know, you have resources to talk to and and you feel comfortable and you understand your body better.